다음에 Nothing tonight, friends. Absolutely, absolutely nothing tonight has brought more confusion to this world than the matter of religion. Nothing tonight confuses people more. And nothing tonight has brought confusion upon people more than the matter of religion. <coughs> Do you know what so many people ask today and say today? I'm so confused. I don't know who to believe and I don't know what to believe and I don't know why to believe. Now listen, friends. Has religion confused you? Nothing has confused more people than the matter of religion. Do you know something else, friends? Nothing has disappointed more people than the matter of religion either. More people have been let down and disappointed with religion. Do you know one of our ladies was on the doors the other night? Do you know what a lady said to her? I'm sick of this old religion. Do you know someone? I don't blame her. <coughs> Nothing has let more people down, friends. And nothing has disappointed more people than the matter of religion. My goodness me, religion tonight, I'll tell you something, they've done nothing for me. You didn't hear about the wee fella who called his daddy over to the gate and looked into the field and there was a donkey stand. He says, Dad, come on, do you see this donkey? That donkey's feeding on religion more than grass. She says, how do you know that son? She says, look at the big long sad face on it. <laughs> but it's true. Nothing has disappointed people more than religion. Do you know what's so true? Nobody knows what to believe, who to believe, or why to believe. And do you know why that is, friends? Because we have got away from the Bible. If there's ever a day, if there's ever a moment we need to get back to the Bible, friends, it's this day. Now listen to me. Nothing has confused more people. Nothing has disappointed more people. Listen to me. Nothing has damned more people than religion. Do you know tonight, friends, Men has lost their souls more over religion than they have drink. More people are in hell tonight because of religion. Oh, I know, preacher, I go to my church every Sunday morning. That'll get me into heaven. Well, it won't get you into heaven. Oh, but preacher, I was christened when I was a wee baby. Sure, I was christened when I was a wee baby. Did that make me a Christian? No, it didn't make me a Christian. More people tonight. And maybe you're here, love. And you're leaning on the broken stick of religion. My friend, religion won't save you. No religion will save you. And nothing confuses. And nothing disappoints. And nothing has damned more souls in hell than the matter of religion. 
You know, I haven't come to preach religion. It didn't do me a button of good, and I'll not do you any button of good either. But do you know something tonight? Religion not only confused the people of our day, it confused the people of the day when my blessed Saviour walked this earth. Did you know that? Nobody knew what to believe or who to believe. In fact, the Lord Jesus asked the question, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who do the folk say that I am? He went to the disciples and he asked the question, I can almost hear them. Do you know I heard a boy saying the other night, you're a legend? There's a man across the street said you were Jeremiah. Others say you're one of the prophets. Ah, but then he had this question. And this is my text tonight. And my friend, this question hinges on where you will be in a hundred years from now. And here's my text. It's found in Matthew 16 and verse 15. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? My dear own dear friend tonight, listen to me. How do you answer that question? Who do you say tonight the Lord Jesus really is? He would say to me, well, George Abe, oh, he was a good man. He was the man that went about doing miracles. He went about healing the sick. Friend, is that all you can say about him? My friend, the Lord Jesus Christ is the most important person you'll ever encounter. And he's not just the most important person. He's the most powerful person. And he's so powerful tonight. He's so powerful that one day our queen will have to bow at his feet. Whom, whom say ye that I am? I want to bring you to this man tonight. And by the grace of God and by the help of God, I want you to clearly see who Jesus really is. You know, first and foremost, I want you to see him tonight as the Creator Christ. He's no ordinary person tonight. I want you to know he's the Creator Christ. Now listen to what the Bible says. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth. All things were created by him and for him. Do you know you meet some queer cowboys in life? And I'm one of them. They all tell me, a lot of people tell me, oh, it all started with a big bang. Do you believe in the Big Bang Theory? Well, I'll tell you something. This may shock some of you. I believe in the Big Bang Theory. You didn't know that, Gordon. <laughs> I believe in the Big Bang Theory. But the only part of the Big Bang Theory I believe in, the Big Bang hasn't happened yet. Do you know what 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10 says? It says the day is coming when the heavens will dissolve with a great noise. And friend, I can tell you now, don't you believe the cowboy that tells you, oh, it all started with a big bang. Back in 1974, there was a car bomb planted about 50, 50 yards from where I lived in Ochanaclay. I'll tell you, when that big bang went off, I'll tell you there wasn't too much left intact. Listen, friends. The moon and the stars and the planets that you see were all created by Christ. You see, my friend, tonight so many people are blinded. They're blinded with this fully religion. 
had a fellow come into my work one day and he says to me, he seen me and my workmate reading the Bible. He says, you don't believe that old nonsense, do you? Say, what are you talking about, Jim? He says, you don't believe that Bible. He says, of course I believe it. What do you think I'm reading it for? Do you think I'm reading for the full of it? He says, Jim, do you not believe it? God, don't believe a word of it. He says, don't believe a word of it. He says, Jim, tell me something now. Where do you think you came from? Oh, he says, we were evolved. He talked like that, you know. He talked with a head tilted. We were evolved. He says, evolved from what, Jim? He says, we were evolved from apes and monkeys. He says, oh, boys are boys, not powerful. He says, Jim, tell me now you don't believe that. He says, I do, he says. Oh, Darwin's a man that has the truth. Oh, <laughs> he says, I say. And I kept looking at him like that. They used to keep his pens in his hip pocket. They used to keep looking. I kept looking like this at him, you see. Every, he says, what are you looking at? He says, I'm just looking here, Jim. I thought that was your pen, but the way you're talking is your tail. <laughs> now listen, friend, do you know what the Bible says before we go any further? Do you know what the Bible says? The fool hath said in his heart, there's no God. And I hope tonight you're not foolish in this gospel meeting to believe that there's no God. My dear unsafe friend, there's a God one day you will meet and you will meet him. And that's why the Bible makes it clear we're to prepare to meet our God. Oh, Christ is the all-creator Christ tonight. Hebrews 1 and 2 says, By whom also he made all the worlds. John 1 and 3, all things were created, made by him, and without him was nothing made. I can tell you he's the creator of Christ. Do you want to know something else? I want you to know tonight he's the compassionate Christ. Do you know, friend, I never saw a generation and I never saw a day where people's hearts break. People seem to have everything nowadays. But you know what I have found? The people who seem to have everything, inwardly they've got nothing. And their hearts break. And I want you to know tonight, my dear unsaved friend, Jesus is not only the creator of Christ, thank God tonight, he's the compassionate Christ. He's the one tonight who really does care. My dear unsaved friend, we live in a world and we live in a day where nobody seems to care. Would you agree with me on that? Nobody seems to care anymore. But I want you to know Jesus cares. He's the one tonight who turns nobody away. He's the one tonight that will come when everybody else goes. He's the one that will lift when everybody else walks away. And my friend, I want you to know that he is the compassionate Christ. Do you know tonight when you read through the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you'll find him there to be the most compassionate person. My friend, I never saw once my blessed Savior turn anybody away. The dying leper in Matthew chapter 8, when they, nobody else would touch him with a barge pole, my blessed Jesus put his hands on him and healed him. Poor blind man in Luke chapter 18. Then cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. What did my Savior do? He stopped, didn't he? He stopped and he brought him forth, commanded him to come forth, and Jesus made him whole. My friend, he had compassion on the sick, hadn't he? Whoever touched them were made completely whole. And I want you to know tonight 
that the Saviour who I bring you to is the compassionate Christ. My friend, do you remember that day on Calvary's Hill? In Luke 23, when a dying thief, I a dirty, rotten scoundrel he was too. When he died on the cross, he cried, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. You know the Lord Jesus, did the Lord Jesus condemn him? No, the Lord Jesus showed him wonderful compassion. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. My friend tonight, I want you to know that my Savior is the most compassionate Christ. Even when they nailed him to that old rugged cross, he was so compassionate on the soldiers that even crucified him. He prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus cares for the weary. Jesus cares for the weak. And Jesus cares for the worn out soul. For you, Jesus, came to seek. My friend, I want you to know tonight, troubled soul, no matter what your sin is, if you come to the blessed Savior tonight, you'll never find he'll turn you away. And mind the night I got saved. The 26th of August, 1985. I'll never forget it. It was a wet, windy, bank holiday Monday night. I came to Jesus as I was. And I was weary and worn and sad, but I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. And I'll tell you, I wasn't dressed like this the night I came. Oh, no, I wasn't dressed like this. You know, the Lord's not waiting on you to dress up before you come either. And an old pair of jeans on me. A pair of Dr. Martin boots. Do you remember the Dr. Martin boots? Do you remember them? It took you half an hour to put them on, an hour and a half to get them off. And I'll tell you another thing I had on me. I had a half packet of cigarettes in my pocket either. Two. Had indeed. Embassy Regal Blue. And I'll tell you, I came to the Lord Jesus with cigarettes in my pocket and I'll tell you something. He didn't turn me away either then. Oh, my friend, he's the compassionate Christ tonight. I pray and I trust that you'll come to know my blessed Saviour. There's none like him. He's the creator of Christ. He's the compassionate Christ. I want to tell you also, friend, he was the crucified Christ. He was the Christ that went to Calvary's cross. He's the Christ tonight who was nailed to that cross because he wanted to die for you so that your sins could be punished on him. <coughs> tell me this. Tell me this. You ever see a clergyman getting crucified? Or a pastor? Any other man? Nobody ever, ever went to the cross to be crucified for anybody. Ah, but my blessed Savior did. I'll tell you one thing, I couldn't do it. But my friend, I want you to bring, come with me now to that old rugged cross. And see there the crucified Christ tonight. The one with nails in his hands and his feet. The one with thorns upon his brow. And my dear unsafe friend, gaze upon the crucified Christ tonight, because on that cross so long ago, Jesus took your place and mine. Do you know why he died? He died that we might be forgiven. He died to make us good. He died that we might go at last where? To heaven how? Saved! Through his precious blood. My dear unsaved friend tonight, I present to you the creator of Christ. I present to you tonight the compassionate Christ. But I present to you tonight the crucified Christ. The one tonight that stands between you and hell. 
The one tonight who died to save you. The one who died that you might have life and might have it more abundantly. Friend, tonight I present you to him. I'm not presenting myself. I can't save you. And the church can't save you. No, anybody can't save you. But Christ can save you. Christ Jesus came into this world. What to do? To save sinners. Do you believe it? He came into this world to save sinners. He came into this world to seek and to save that which was lost. He didn't come in to save. He didn't come in to make me religious. Listen, the night I got saved, I didn't get a pile of religion into me. I got life. Glory to God. I got life. I'm not walking up here like one of these boys. I'm saved now. Oh, not at all. He says, I have come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Do you know someone tonight? There's more people looking about life. They're looking for the right thing, but in the wrong place. I want you to know tonight, life, life, abundant life, Jesus alone is the giver. He died. On that old cruel cross, my dear unsafe friend, to be your saviour. You see, friend, the Bible teaches us all tonight. Listen to me. Do you know we have a wild, bad belief in this country of ours? We have an awful bad belief. You know what the belief is? The belief is this. I was born a Protestant and I'm going to die a Protestant. I was born a Catholic and I'm going to die a Catholic. You know what the Bible teaches? You were born a sinner and you're going to die a sinner and you're going to go to hell because you're a sinner. And that's the Bible. Do you know some friends, when you come each night, I preach nothing, only what's in this book. We need to get back to the Bible. And the Bible says that, Romans 3, 23, for we all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Do you know what Romans 6 and 23 says? The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, thank God there's a gift. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. The gift of God is eternal life. Where? In Jesus Christ. And I can tell you, friend, tonight, life, life, abundant life. If you want it, Jesus alone is the giver. Friend of mine, the night I was saved. I was so happy. I was so joyful. You know someone? I didn't know why I walked home, floated home, or run home. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Do you want to know something like this? could be yours. Experience. That night when I came to him, the one who died for me, and my dear own safe friend, you better believe he died for you. He died for you. Died to save you. Died to forgive you. He died to make you whole. Oh, friend, tonight, if, if I could only take out of me and give to you for five minutes, you'd be out there doing like a bullet because you wouldn't want to give it and take me back. That's a fact. But I can't do that. But what I have tonight, you can have. But it's only found in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whom say ye that I am? But you know someone, friend, tonight, he wasn't only the, the creator of Christ. And he's not only the compassionate Christ and the, uh, and the crucified Christ. Glory to God, he's the conquering Christ. He's the conquering Christ. Thank God that on the third day when he died on that cross, after he died, on the third day he, what? Rose again and tonight he's a living saviour. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive forevermore. Jesus, my saviour, is alive. Do you want no friend? He conquered sin. Hallelujah. And he conquered death. Hallelujah. And he conquered Satan. Hallelujah. And he conquered the grave. Thank God. And I can tell you, he's alive tonight. Do you want to know something about the Lord Jesus? He's in this very building right now in the power of the Holy Spirit. My friend, I don't bring to you tonight a, a dead Christ. I bring to you tonight a living Christ. And my friend, tonight I want you to know him as I know him. And friend, tonight you're going to have that personal experience. But I'll tell you something now before I close. He's the coming Christ. Jesus is coming again. 
And all you've got to do, friend, is take a look at your television screens and you tell you now the, the signs of the Lord's coming are staring at you in the face. Did you know tonight, my dear unsafe friend, that Jesus is coming again and he's coming soon? The signs are all there for us. And the day that Christ comes, every Christian is going to come and leave this world in the twinkling of an eye. And God help you, and I say that in love tonight, God help you tonight if you're left behind when Jesus comes. Because if you're left behind, you'll never be saved. And once Christ comes, then the Antichrist comes. And we enter into a period what is known as the seven-year tribulation period. And I can tell you, friend, this world has seen earthquakes. This world has seen tsunamis. This world has seen holocaust. This world has seen disasters. They're all Mickey Mouse stuff. To what's come unto this world, you believe me. And he's coming. He's the coming Christ. And you need to be saved before he comes. The coming of the Lord draweth nigh. I can tell you tonight he's coming. How do I know? Because my blessed Saviour told me he was coming. I will come again. I will come again, and I can tell you, friend, if there ever is a day and an hour, you can almost feel it in your bones. He's the coming Christ. And if he comes tonight, friend, now you imagine, if Christ came now, do you know what would happen? Every Christian would just disappear. Disappear. Out of sight, disappear, away to be with the Lord. In a, in a split second, we all would be gone. And you'd be left sitting there. And mind you, that's coming. And I'm going to give a whole night on that some night. The second coming of Christ. But I want to finish tonight. He's the calling Christ. Thank God he still calls sinners. And I want you to know tonight if there's somebody in this meeting and you're not saved I wonder tonight already have you heard him calling him that cometh to me he said I will in no ways cast out friend did he cast away the adulterous woman in John 8 of course he didn't but friend, perhaps tonight he calls you, even at this very outset of this gospel mission, he calls you tonight. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank God he's still calling. Is he calling you, friend? He's calling you to himself this evening. <laughs> wonder can you hear his voice friend tonight your journey for heaven begins not at a christening font your journey for heaven begins not at a communion reel your journey for heaven begins as you come as a sinner to Christ in repentance of your sin and you trust him as your saviour. You know, friend, the 7th of December 1941 was a bad day for Pearl Harbor, wasn't it? Long after that awful, awful day, a young American woman was given her testimony at how her father and her brother were killed at Pearl Harbor that fateful day of the 7th of December, 1941. She stood there that day and testified to the very fact that she held no bitterness to the Japanese airmen that took the life of her father and brother. She said, I love them and I pray for them that they'll come to know my Christ. You know what happened? 
she didn't know. In that congregation was the Japanese pilot that led the attack in Pearl Harbor. Through that young girl's testimony, that pilot heard the sweet strains of the Savior calling. And that night, that Japanese pilot who headed the attack in Pearl Harbor came to saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and was saved. Friend, tonight, I trust in this opening mission who have heard his voice and that you'll come to him because he calls. And perhaps he's calling you tonight for the very first time. And you listen to his promise. Him that cometh to me, I will in no ways cast out. Will you come to him tonight? Who calls you? Let's all bow in a wee word of prayer together, please.